Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to talk about a very basic concept of .NET, which is exception handling. In this video, first, I'm going to discuss what is an exception. Then I'm going to create a project where I'm going to implement exception handling using try catch finally and talk about some of the best practices. Then next I'm going to talk about how to throw an exception and what are the different aspects of that. And then after that, I'm going to talk about user defined exceptions, how we create them and what are the best practices there. And finally, I'm going to talk about how we can use filtering exceptions. Some of this concept are same whether you are using legacy .NET framework or .NET Core or .NET 5. So first let's talk about what is exception. An exception is essentially any error conditions or an unexpected behavior which we encounter when we are running an application. So it can be due to for example a connection failure if we are trying to connect to a database, an HTTP exception in case of a network unavailable or or a file not available when we are trying to access a file. So there might be multiple reason why an exception can occur. And now I'm going to show how in C Sharp we handle exception. So I'm going to create a console application and I'm going to name it as exception handling dot demo. And once the project is created, I'm just going to show how we use exception handling in C sharp. So it's a try catch block and I can put this code inside try. And when we catch an exception, we can declare an object and then we can use this object to write what the exception is. So we can do something like this and same thing can go into a log file. So this is a simple try catch block and then we can have a finally and the way finally works is irrespective of an exception or not, the finally block of code will be executed. Meaning anything that we want to do absolutely irrespective of a code was successful or a failure, we will put that into finally. Usually statements like disposing of an object is put inside finally, but there are other things which can be as well done inside of finally code block. So this is a basic building block of exception. Now let's create an exception. So what I can do is I can try to read a file which does not exist and this is going to throw an exception and once the exception is thrown what I'm going to do is I'm going to debug the exception and I'm going to show some of the properties of the exception object which we usually use on a day-to-day -day basis. So what I can do here I can do file dot and I have to add the system dot io namespace for that. So I can do open and then here I can say C colon slash test dot txt which does not exist and you can just use open read and then here we are going to get an exception I'm going to put a big point here and I'm going to run this application and once we go here see we got an exception now if I can expand on the exception object Let's look into some of this property. So one of the property is a message, which is we use to tell exactly what happened. The second one is the source where from where the exception is coming. And the third and one of the most important one is the stack trace. The stack trace tells you exactly where the exception was initiated and what is the call flow for this particular exception. So you can see it started at line 12 here when we wanted to file.open. So it says, you know, line 12 and initially it was file.open and then file stream constructor and then create a file handle and validate file handle and that's where it could not validate the file because the part doesn't exist and hence we got an exception and apart from this there are a couple of other properties which also are very important one of them is inner exception and this property will be filled if there is a exception which was initially raised and then it was encapsulated by an outer exception the other thing that sometimes we use is a help link. So help link can hold an URL about the information of the exception and this is sometime is used and then another thing is the data. Data is essentially a dictionary. Here 
here the data is empty but this can be used to pass if you want to use some arbitrary key value pair you can use the data and then another thing you can see is the file name now file name is a specific property for this particular exception it is a property which is not available in the base class which is the exception file name is a property of this particular exception and you can find out what the exception is if we just edit to a watch and do a get type this is going to tell what is the type of the exception and you can see this is a file not found exception and file not found exception is something which has the file name property so that's a custom property for this file not found exception object so now that we have seen some of the basic properties let's get into the next topic that i wanted to discuss which is some of the best practices of handling exception so when we handle exception there are a couple of things one thing is as i mentioned earlier we should use finally block to close out something which we essentially want to do irrespective of if there was an exception or not second thing is we should be catching more specific exception to generic exception meaning here if we have a potential of file not found exception then the fast catch block should be file not found exception and then the next one should be the generic exception and again we might not even need it because in this case this might never occur but we should always go from specific exception to a more generic exception that's another best practice that we should always follow another practice that you should follow is don't catch an exception if you don't know how to handle it for example here if you get a file not found exception maybe you know how to handle it meaning if the file is not found there is no point in bubbling this exception up in this case it is inside main so there is nothing to bubble up but in other cases so for example if we had this inside a private method instead of the main let's say we were inside this method and this method or this function is called from the main in this case if file is not found we are not going to do anything but any other exception we just want to bubble up to the main so that main can decide what it wants to do with that exception so the point here or the best practice here is don't try to handle an exception if you don't know how to handle it and it is very specific to your business need to the responsibility of a class and other thing you should try to avoid doing is catching an exception and just throwing it doesn't add much value unless you really want to do something in case of the exception happens and then afterwards you want to rethrow so that the caller decides what they want to do that is the only situation where you would rethrow an exception otherwise you'll catch the exception and you will do some business logic in terms of how do you want to react in case of that exception and one of the reaction can be just rethrowing but when you throw an exception you should just use throw there is no need to do throw off the exception itself you can see we are already getting a squiggly and this is because if you throw off the exception it is not going to preserve the stack trace if you want to preserve the stack trace you just use throw statement this is another best practice you should always keep in mind the next thing i want to discuss is another best practice is we should design classes to avoid exception so for example here if we have an open read before that we can do something like file dot exists and here we can pass the file path and we can say if file does not exist and in this case what we can do is instead of getting an exception which is unexpected we can decide we can throw an exception which is very specific so for example consider that the file name has been passed as a parameter then what we can do is we can change the code here and the file name can be passed from the main method here also we can use the same file name now at this point if the file is not found we can use another important keyword of the exception management system in dotnet which is throw 
So here we can throw a new exception and we can say file not found exception and specify our message. So this is more proactive than this is reactive here. But in terms of the exception that not much changes in these two cases. The other thing where we usually always throw exception is for argument validation. And here the argument validation would probably happen outside of the try catch block because if you are validating an argument and throwing exception, there's no point in catching it and rethrowing it. You rather just throw the exception outside of this function. So for example, if we want to make sure that the file name pass is a non-null or empty, so we can say if string dot is null or empty and we can f check the file name. So if the file name is null or empty, we can throw new argument exception and we can pass a message here, something like file name, file name should not be null or empty. This is another way to proactively stop a null reference exception by validating this. So this is another best practice in terms of making sure that if we can avoid an exception by raising an appropriate exception and handling arguments. The next thing is user-defined exception classes. So for user-defined exception classes, there are a couple of best practice which is followed. First of all, the exception class name has to end with an exception or should suffix with exception. So if we create an exception class, let's create a new class and name it as custom exception. And the custom exception class should always derive from exception based class. And when we do that, what we should do is, as you can see, is asking for implement standard exception constructor we should do that. So when we implement, ideally here, the best practice is to implement three different constructor. One is a default constructor. So the second one is a constructor which takes a message. And the third one is a constructor which takes a message and an inner exception. So these things are standard that we should use. And as I mentioned earlier, we can also have some custom properties that we might want to expose. So we can have something like count and this is something will be part of the custom exception. So here, for example, if file name doesn't exist, you can instead throw a custom exception and here you can say error occurred. And now in this case, we can handle the custom exception and along with the exception, we can print the count, which is going to be of course zero because we really did not do anything with the count, but we can do count and we can access it. And if I run this application, of course, because I'm throwing the exception here, it's going to break, but let's see, at least we should see the count. So you can see that count is zero and the exception, let me just run it. It's going to rethrow and it's going to break. Now, because we are just rethrowing the exception here, I can put a try catch block here. And I can put the custom exception. And here I can do So now if we run this application, so you can see here error, custom exception error occurred, and then count is equal to zero. Whereas this is this is the top level one, and as you can see, the stack trace is different. So here you can see it shows the stack trace of 12. It starts with line number 12 in the program, and then 30. So initially it was 12, then the next exception happens in 30. So it is preserving the stack trace. Now here, instead of throw, if we would have done the throw of exception and run it, you will see a different behavior in the console output. And now you see that it says line number 12, which is the top. And then it says line number 
36, which is the line where we rethrow the exception. So it, it lost the actual stack trace of where the error happened. So that's about the custom exception. And the last thing I wanted to show is the filtering of exception. So how we can use filtering in an exception. So what you can do is, for example, let me just get rid of this code. So here, what we can do is, let's say we want to look for a specific message. So we can do when exception dot message dot contains test then do it otherwise just don't do so now if we run it we will not see any output because it will not match this condition so it will not come inside this and it will just bubble up so if we run this we can see that only top level exception handler which is this one has covered we did not get inside of this custom exception but if I just change this from test to error, which is a text which contains in the exception and run it, now you can see it is handled both. And this is where the data property of an exception becomes really helpful. So if you want to have some sort of intelligence in the exception, let the exception handler decide whether to handle the exception or not based on certain condition, you can use it in the you can add it into the data. So you can do ex.data.add and you can have key value, some key value that you add. And here you can do, you can come here, data dot contains and then it is going to look into the data and see if the key exists and I can give key as key and then I'm going to throw the exception and if I do that now if I run this I should see exact same behavior as before so as you can see we're seeing first the inner one and then the outer one and I can just put a breakpoint here to show how it works and you can see in the exception the data if I expand it, it has one item. And if I expand, you can see it is a key of key and then value of value. So this is how you can use the when condition. And I think this is a very handy feature that we can use in the exception for filtering out different type of exception. So that is all I wanted to cover today. Again, this was a very basic concept, which I think everyone knows, but I wanted to cover some of the nuances. I hope some of this feature will be useful and new for some of my viewers. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any question regarding this video, please leave a comment below. And if you are new to my channel, if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.